Today we have to repair our heat pump because the fan blade stopped running and so that means it could be one of two things. It's either the capacitor which I replaced about a year ago or the motor for the fan blade and I believe it's the motor uh, because uh, we've had this problem since we've been here every single winter. This is our third winter and every winter We've had to deal with this where the blade stops spinning, the air blows cold. So today we're going to be opening this thing up and I'm going to replace the motor. I bought this motor last year because I wasn't sure if it was the capacitor. Like I said, we had the problem already last year for of the blades not spinning. And also we've had the problem with the unit freezing up all of the coils. They didn't freeze up this time. Um, but they, the blades stopped running, so we were getting cold air in the house. So now what we're going to do is we're going to replace the motor, because I have the motor. I replaced the capacitor last year. I was hoping that maybe that's all it needed, but apparently it's more than that. Um, the blades, if I try to hit the blades with a stick, as they say to do, to see if, the, if they kick back on, sometimes if you move it with a stick, not your hands, not your fingers, so cut your fingers off you have to use a stick so I did that and the blades don't come on so I think we need to replace the motor and I think once I replace the motor we're going to be good if I still have a problem I will replace a capacitor again because I, I, I put a new one last year and I don't think it's the capacitor I think it's the motor I think it's the fan blade motor but if it's still giving me the problem then I will put in another capacitor because I have that too. Okay, first things first. The first thing I did is I disconnected the power from inside the house to the heat pump here. And then I pulled this out right here so that it doesn't have any power to it because we don't want to get electrocuted. So there are four four nuts right here that you need to remove. I shouldn't need too many tools to do this. I don't want to lose my washers over here. I should have taken the sides off first and that's all right. We're going to have to remove that motor regardless. So, kind of did it backwards. That's all right. As long as we get it done, that's all that matters. And save money. Hopefully, the motor I bought is compatible. It should be. Too late to return it. I bought it a year ago. I'm pretty sure it's going to work out. the screws in my pocket so I don't lose them. Okay. So, as I was saying, I should have taken out the side screws first. So I did it a little bit backwards, but that's okay. Here's the motor. We're going to take this out. And, uh, I said the power, make sure that power is off. Need to get a plier, get that off. That little nut right there I removed and this should pop right out. The whole there we go. There's the blade. There's my blade. And it's gonna go like this. I'll keep this here out of the way. Okay now. See what we have to do to disconnect this motor. So now we have to remove this screw here and on the other side and take this panel off.
You could also use a screwdriver, like a flathead, if you don't have a ratchet. That's that. That came off easy because it's missing a screw. Let's see if we can get this cleaned up here from all the spider webs. So I have to cut this out and then we'll put another zip tie on there. So we're not building today but these are things that need to be addressed as well. So it's all part of it. It's not just about building. So here's the old motor, and uh, we'll take this, we'll take these wires, because we're going to have to reuse this piece of plastic right here, this tube. Here's the new motor, as you can see, it has the same wires, purple, pink and black. So, it should be a perfect fit. You just want to make sure you get the correct one because like this particular motor has four screws and the one I got also has four screws and they're in the same place. So very important. Some of them only have three, some have five. So you have to make sure you get the right one. I'm gonna run the wires back through the tubing right here piece of PVC right there like that just like it was and we're gonna set it back up here and do the same thing in reverse we're gonna stick these wires through the bottom hole There's a hole back here where all the wires go through and that's where you run your wires. Okay, now. The black one goes here. So now we're doing it in the reverse as I said before. The purple. Right back where they were before. Get that pushed in there good. Okay, everything is back. I'm going to get a zip tie, if I can find one, and put a zip tie back on this. And then we put everything back and we are done. We got my little washer and that little lock nut right there. It goes on the back, on the top of the unit of the lid here. So I'm just going to put one in, hold it. Once I get two in there, I can flip it over and put the other two. Wasp nest, spider webs. Alright, that's fine. And while I'm at it, I'm going to try to clean inside here. You want to pick up all that debris as much as possible. There's like a dead mouse right there. So, uh, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get something and clean this up. I have zip ties but I can't find them right now so I'm just going to put a string around it just temporarily. We got the panel back on, everything is connected, 
we can flip this over now because I got two screws holding it. I want to show you what I did. Make sure the fan blade is mounted in the correct position with the blade going upwards from the top. This is the piece of PVC that was there. It covers the wires, it conceals the wires all the way through and it fits right into here. Okay, and then the wires come down through this hole and then connect to where I showed you right there. Okay, so pretty straightforward, very easy, very easy, very simple. I don't think it's too big of a deal. I cleaned up a bit on the bottom. It needs a better cleaning, but now we have to try and get everything lined up right here. up good we put our screws back on and hopefully everything is going to work correctly now we're going to tighten this down I want it tight, I don't want to strip it, but I want it tight. I don't want the motor to move, because it does vibrate a lot. Now we put these back on, on the sides. Oh, that didn't take long at all. Keep leaves and debris away from around your unit because you don't want anything clogging it. And that's the very first thing you need to check for when uh, when your blade stops spinning. So I'm gonna I'm gonna plug this back in. Go inside and turn it on. Fingers crossed. Ah, so the blades are still not spinning. I'm going to try and replace the red capacitor now and see if maybe, maybe the capacitor went bad again, possibly because I had a bad motor. So I'm going to replace the capacitor now and then we'll test it again. 
Well, I gotta get my tools. Well, I went ahead and swapped the capacitor because I had an extra one on hand, a brand new one. And it's running. So, I'm thinking that the motor made the capacitor go bad. I went and grabbed my laptop and I want to read something to you. Why would an AC capacitor burn out? Your AC capacitor may also fail if the fan motor burns out or is somehow impeded from spinning freely. And remember, I've been saying that the fan just wasn't spinning and even when I tried to hit it with a stick, the fan wouldn't kick on. The capacitor continues to send power to try and operate the fan, but eventually overloads and burns out. So that's what happened. The capacitor burned out, even though I replaced it last year. It burned out because the motor was the problem from the beginning. And instead of replacing the motor, I replaced the capacitor and it was working for a while. But again, when we get those really, really cold nights, the fan stops blowing. It just can't do it. The motor was done. So we replaced the motor. We put in a new capacitor and now it's working because what happened is even though I put a new motor in, the capacitor was burned out and it wasn't sending power to the motor because that is what the capacitor does. It sends power to the motor. Now we have a working heat pump. So thumbs up. If this video helped you guys, I hope it helped some of you. If it did, you know what to do. Thanks for watching. See you on the next one.